Hi, Gay DeRusso with the Majestic Rider. So today I'm going to talk to you about owning a young horse. There's lots of people who are out in the market for younger horses. And there's some things about younger horses that most of you should understand that usually a lot of people don't know when they're going into buying a horse. So I consider anything under at least 12 years old to be a younger horse. Uh, the difference between a younger horse and an older horse is one experience. The older horse hopefully will have more experience if it has been ridden a fair amount and it has training, which it should when it's 12 and up. Uh, those horses most of the time don't usually need as much preparation if they were ridden correctly. I say that because some horses have just been stuck off in pasture for 10 years and so they might not have much training at all. But usually those horses are prepared well, they have more experience, they have more miles under their belt, and hopefully would be less spooky. A lot of times as the horse get older, it also, just like people, we're not as energetic. So sometimes it might be slower or calmer for the person. And also it can have some arthritis, so it usually, not all of them, but it usually might not buck as hard or rear as high if issues come up. When you're getting a younger horse, the things that you want to be aware of is one, it's going to cost you a fair amount of money. Now the cost of the horse is not what I'm talking about. because So you could get a younger horse and it might be on the cheaper side. What you have to know is that if you are not a horse trainer and have not had younger horses before, it takes a fair amount of time to make a good, safe trail horse. So one, you have to put a fair amount of training on the horse. Even if that young horse came with training, it's very easy for people who don't know what they're doing to take that training off. And so you're gonna need the help of a trainer over many years to help you make that horse nice and safe for you. And you're gonna need the help of a trainer for guidance to make sure that you're not making mistakes and making the horse learn bad things. Um, or having it come up with behavior issues. So again, the price of the horse might be cheaper, but in the end, you're gonna spend a lot more money putting training and time on that horse. Younger horses can test people a little bit more. They're like children or like a puppy dog, right? You gotta teach them the rules and you gotta teach them what to do, but they're gonna test to see if they really have to do those things or not. Now, older horses test as well. Or horses naturally test because they are testing where they usually are in a herd. That's their instinct. So they're going to test more, though, if they're a younger horse to see if they can move up above you. So if you don't catch those things, that horse might take over pretty fast. And then again, you'll need the help of a trainer to try to get that horse's respect back. When you own a young horse, you have to know how to help it get past obstacles, how to get it brave on the trail, and what are good things to do with it and what are bad things to do with it. So you have to build trust with that horse. That horse has to trust you to get it through obstacles and over things on the trail. If that horse is just relying on the other horses and the other horses leave, you're gonna have a big problem. So you have to know that you have to teach that horse to believe in the human and have the human get it through the obstacles, not the other horses. When you have a younger horse, it might not be used to being ridden alone. It might not be used to being ridden in big groups. So these are things you wanna think about and prepare it ahead of time. Uh, lunging or round pending is a very good thing to do to prepare your, prepare your horse mentally and also get some of that extra energy off. So you have to think, am I willing to lunge this horse or round pend it before I ride it each time to make sure it's safe? I can tell you most people don't. Um, so that's something you want to take into consideration. Do you know how to ride a buck? Because if that's a young horse, sooner or later, he might throw out a buck or he might kick out. Would you be able to stay on? And lots of people will tell you, well, this young horse is gentle and this young horse is very calm. Well, any of them can buck. And again, if you're getting a young horse, you want to make sure that you know what to do, how to ride it out, and then also how to prevent the horse from doing it again in the future. Do you know how to ride a rear? Because again, this might happen, especially if you push the horse too far for something and he's not prepared for it, he might rear up to say, no, I'm not going. So do you know what to do when that horse rears up? Do you know how far to push a young horse? 
These are all things that you might need the help of a trainer over the years and over time to get that nice horse that you want. Now I've seen over the years some people want a certain breed, they want a certain color, and so they breed a horse for what they want, but what they're not prepared for is how long it takes that horse to get there, how long it takes to make that a safe horse, and also to get their confidence up. Because the older horses with experience usually cost more, a lot of people will opt for that younger horse that doesn't have as much training on it. But in the end, you're probably going to end up spending more than you would have if you just got the experienced horse. It's just going to be spread out over the years. And then again, the horse might end up not having the gates that you like or not having the temperament that you like because you bought it when it was young and that's going to change. So sometimes as a four-year-old, those horses are great, but when they hit six or seven, they start testing people. And you have to be ready for that. Again, it's just like a child or a puppy. Sooner or later, they're gonna test to see if they can get away with it. So are you ready for that? Are you prepared? Uh, do you have someone to help you for backup? I always tell people if they're gonna ride, um, buy a young horse that hopefully they're a good rider, they have a trainer access, or I try to make sure there's a trainer around to help them in case they do have problems. I'm always around for help as well, and I try to get them to call me or send me videos if they have issues. But you want to make sure that you have a plan. A lot of people get the horses and they don't have a plan at all. They're out in the middle of nowhere. They don't have a trainer to help them. Um, you know, they don't even have a lot of access to veterinarians. Uh, they always say, well, a neighbor said they would help me, and the neighbor never does, just so you know, because they're always busy as well, or the person feels bad asking them for help. So um, the other thing is your balance. Your balance changes as you get older. So riding a young horse that might be quicker or could spin quicker maybe than an older horse will also come into consideration. It's much easier for us to fall off as we get older. Our muscle strength is not the same. Our balance is not the same. We don't ride the same as we did in our 20s, although in our brain we think we do. And that's how I see a lot of accidents because people th still think they're 20 years old in their brain, but their body's not 20 and they can't stay on anymore. So if you're an older person, you're gonna get a younger horse, get that trainer, make sure you have access, prepare that horse well, and make sure you wear a helmet and wear a vest or several vests. Um, to make sure that you don't get hurt if you do end up coming off because we know with horses any of us can fall off any day it doesn't matter how good a rider we are they can fall down with us even if we don't fall off they can land on top of us so those are things we have to be prepared for and young horses when they're not uh, used to being on the trail they can be a little bit more trippy because they might have been just ridden in the arena so they're not used to stepping over stuff and you'll see when I'm training the horses that I'm teaching them to go over logs, teaching them to go through gullies. I'm teaching them how to get around rocks because they don't know how to do it. So if you just drop the rein and you go, well, he's supposed to help me. That's what I read online. Well, if he's a young horse, he's not going to help you because he has no idea either. So one of you has to actually have a good idea of how to get through those things. So it's not that young horses are bad. Young horses are great. But a lot of people get them for the wrong reasons. They get them for their cheaper because they want that horse to last as long as they're going to ride. And those things usually don't always work out well because, again, it's cheaper because it's going to need more training. So in the end, you're going to spend a lot more money. And then also, if you want it to outlast you, oh, it might. Uh, and it might take you to the hospital a couple of times as well, okay? Because a lot of people ride with the wrong people, they don't do the right training on the horse, they think since it's young and calm that they'll get by, and you can get by for a while until somebody does something wrong, either you or your friends, it sets that horse off and they go into a bucking fit or rearing, or you know they just don't know what to do with their feet and they fall down, okay? So I've just seen a fair amount of people going that way, and I, hopefully this will help you to make an educated decision on what to do. And some of you are trying to get ready because your other horse is getting older and or passed away or something. Just remember, a young horse takes a lot of work. So get a trainer. Make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're in shape. Make sure you know how to ride out things well. And um, make sure you know some defensive maneuvers. So if your horse does those things, you're able to control it. You're able to ride it safely. And you're able to educate that horse to make that horse into a great adult horse and not into a bad adult horse because i've seen that where people give the young horse 
major problems because they did everything wrong and then they give it to a trainer you know five to ten years later and then we're trying to fix everything that should have been just gradually brought onto that horse correctly in the beginning and then it wouldn't have been such a big deal for that horse. Also remember that young horses shouldn't have a lot of time off in between their training because if they do just like uh, adult horses uh, it's hard to get their work ethic back and get them to wanting to work. Um, that's when they become barn sour. They don't think they have to do a job. The younger horses can throw temper tantrums. The older horses can do it as well. But the younger horses, since they haven't had much work in their history, are like, I don't need to work. They pay for me anyhow. What's the big deal? I'm not going back to work. So it, it, remember, if you have a young horse, and I'm, you, you try to prepare them well. You do lots of ground work with them as they're growing. Then when they're three or four or so, um, you can start getting on their back. But remember, they're not completely grown, so you don't want to work them too hard. Um, but you want to start making sure that they know they do have to work some. A lot of people take them to the trainer and then take the horse home and then they don't work it, you know, and then in a month or so they pull it out and get on it and the horse is bad. That's because it has no work ethic. So you want to make sure when you take it back from that trainer, that trainer shows you what to do with the horse, you keep doing it. And if you have to give that horse months off at times, you take it back to the trainer, have them tune it back up, then you take it back home. But just know it's hard for the trainer as well and dangerous for them the more that horse has time off because then it doesn't want to work and it can throw little hissy fits and it could buck or rear and you don't want your trainer to get hurt either. So it's best to get that horse going keep it working. You don't always have to ride it, but you might have to work it on the ground, still saddle it up, do things on the lunge line, give it little jobs to do, and make sure that it knows it, it's supposed to keep working. But remember, it doesn't have as much time under its belt, and so you can't expect these horses to train themselves. When they're out in pasture, all they're doing is playing games with their friends. They're not learning anything else, so you have to teach them to be a good horse, and you have to be ready that you're going to have to put a fair amount of time into this young horse to get it to where you want it to be. And you really have to look and be like, can I do that with my work schedule? Do I have time to do it? Is this just going to be on the weekend? Because then a uh, young horse is probably not the way to go. Okay. So think it through clearly. I don't like people to get hurt, but I see people get hurt all the time because the horses are younger. They're not prepared. The horse isn't educated and it, it, everything just goes downhill because neither one knows what the other one is doing. Okay, hey, some other things to tell you about uh, young horses is that they don't have as much experience as the older horses. Now, that doesn't mean they're bad or anything like that, but the rider has to expect that the horse maybe has not seen something that you come up upon that is a little weird or odd. You have to be ready for those situations and you have to be someone who's calm and a little dominant and uh, being able to help that horse and give him some guidance on how he's supposed to get through it. If the horse doesn't know what to do and the owner doesn't know what to do, then that becomes a bad situation. So if you get a young horse and you're like, I really don't know how to get him by these things, then get a trainer to help you because you don't want to give the horse a bad experience and you don't want to have a bad experience either. It's best to get someone to get that horse um, some experience on the trails, seeing different animals, having things pop out, seeing bikes and hikers. Um, because they'll be able to get the horse through safely and they'll know if they should get off and help it or they should go with another rider and they're also going to be very calm. If you're, if you have a new horse and say um, you don't know what to do but you're also riding with erratic people 
that can cause some major problems. So if the people you're with all of a sudden just take off, they don't tell you they're gonna canter away, but they just gallop away, the young horse is most likely going to think something is chasing them and want to bolt. The horse will then probably buck because he wants to lighten the weight so he can catch up to those other horses and then you get bucked off. And it's not because he's a bad horse or he did a bad thing, he just did what nature tells him to do, like run faster and get that weight off. But what happened is you're riding with people who aren't helping you and they're the ones who made the situation happen. If you were all just walking or gating or said, let's slowly canter away, um, then you know things usually go fine. But if you ride with people who don't help you, won't give you the time, or they keep telling you like, don't get off, just kick them, beat them up, get them through it, run them by it, you know, we don't wanna wait, you're taking too long, then you're not gonna end up with a nice horse. You're gonna end up with a horse that's scared, that thinks every time he sees something, he has to run by it really fast, or one that has to, thinks he has to run all the time because he's never walked on the trail because the people you're with won't walk. So you wanna teach that horse good behavior. You wanna teach him how to get by things. You wanna give him some courage and you wanna keep that horse safe. Now, if you can do those things, that's great. But a lot of people, when they buy young horses, think the horses are gonna have all that experience. Even if someone has taken the time and trained them some, they are still gonna need some guidance. So you wanna make sure you know how to handle a young horse. It's not the same as handling an older horse. And so with beginner riders, I always tell people, either you have a young horse and you're in with the trainer, so they're there to help you all the time because little issues will come up, or you get an older horse, an older safe horse. Um, and most people don't wanna do that. They wanna get a young horse that's gonna last forever. Well, the hard part is that younger horse usually hurts people, not on purpose, but they fall off and you know they have bad things happen. Then all of a sudden the horse gets a bad reputation where it wouldn't in the first place if it had been handled correctly. So it's better to get an older horse if you don't know what you're doing and then upgrade later. If you get a good older horse, anybody will buy that horse because everybody needs that horse. They need it as a guest horse for their friends. They need it to teach their kids. A great beginner horse will be loved over and over again. So it's not like you have to worry, what am I gonna do when he's old? You'll find homes for him, but you won't find homes for a bad horse. That's much harder to find. So don't think, you know, what do I, you know, I want this horse to last for 20 years. You wanna think, what can I ride now? What can I handle at this point? Young horses are more likely to buck or rear if they're not handled correctly. And because they're more athletic, just like younger people are, they can do those things quicker and faster. And so you want to make sure, you know, I got a young horse. Do I know what to do if it bucks? Can I hold on? Do I have a good seat? If the answer is no, then again, if you get that young horse, be with a trainer. Or otherwise, if you're going to be on your own, don't get a young horse. If the answer um, is you don't know how to ride a, a rear, again, if a horse gets upset, it, it can do a couple of things. It can go sideways, it can go backwards, it can spin, or if it can't go anywhere, it usually goes up in the air. So everybody should know how to ride a rear. And you lean forward if you don't know that. You lean forward, hold on, do not pull on those reins because that's how you flip horses over. So you got to lean forward and hold on and usually on their, their neck or their mane and really lean, but you can easily flip a horse over if it goes high enough. That's why you see it in all the Westerns. And if you watch the guys riding, you'll see what they do. So you don't want that to happen. So you want to be able to know what to do and practice it in the arena. You don't have to make your horse rear up, but practice the movement. The same thing with the buck, practice the movement so you know what to do. If that petrifies you that I just said a horse might rear, then again, get an older horse that doesn't rear. Make sure and taste it, test it well. But with the younger horses, that is possible that someday that will happen and you need know, to know what to do. You need to know how to correct it so that horse doesn't want to do it again. And then you want to know what the cause was so you can fix that as well. So again, when you're looking at horses, if you don't know what you're doing, get older. Get older, get safe, get a trainer or a friend to help you to find that horse. If you know how to ride, you're a good rider, you have a good seat, you want to work with something, you have plenty of time to work with the horse, you know, daily, um, then a young horse might be a great option for you. But no time, beginner, get an older horse and still get a trainer. 
because you're a beginner. There's a lot to learn. Um, I always recommend people go to trainers. When I sell horses, all my people have trainers around. They don't have any problems because the trainer catches things or they'll call me up and they hardly ever call me up because they are able to take care of those things. And um, so the worst thing that's going to happen is they might mess up their gait, but you know, that's not a big deal. That's a safe thing. Um, but otherwise, those people don't have major issues if they have a good trainer because the trainer fixes it for them. But lots of people at home do the wrong thing over and over again, or they don't get the horse out, or you know, the horse hasn't been out for a month and they just jump on it and go and expect it to be well behaved. Well, it's not. It's not going to be. And a young horse is going to be much worse. Um, you're taking chances and maybe you'll get by for a while, but sooner or later it'll come back and you might have a bad accident. And I don't want that to happen to anybody. That's why I keep making these videos to educate you, but you're the only one in the end that can decide those things. Uh, remember trainers try to keep you out of trouble. We don't want you to get hurt. We want you to have a safe horse. We want to have safe horses to train. So we want to make those horses as you know good as they can be because we also want to enjoy riding that horse and schooling it. So again, my best advice is if you still, after watching all of this, are getting a young horse, get good training, and then make sure you have a trainer for backup whenever you are going to take that horse home, that you have someone there that can help you and help you do the right things and give you the correct guide. And so that's what young horses are about. It's just like comparing somebody, you know, when they're new on the job. And that's what a young horse is. They're new on the job and they just don't know how to uh, handle themselves or what they're supposed to do. If there's another horse there to help them, they'll most likely succeed. If there's a person there that can help them, they'll usually succeed well. But if no one's there to help them, that's when they do not do well.